cue the breaking news flash. Insurance companies don't get to decide liability in personal injury cases. I'm Joel, this is Jared. Welcome back to the Williams Ellaby Howard and Easter YouTube channel. That's what we're going to talk about today because we see it so many times where insurance companies send a letter that says, we've concluded our liability investigation and determined that our insured is not at fault. Have a nice day. Well, I guess if everybody believed that, we wouldn't have a job. <laughs> no, we would not. So there are certain things that determine liability and fault in personal injury cases. Those things include documents, videos, pictures, witnesses, all of these things play a part into determining who's at fault, not opinions of insurance company adjusters, some of who may have a GED and didn't even graduate high school. Oh, another news flash, right? But it <laughs> happens. You would think there would be professional, professionally trained, educated people if they're going to be determining things involving accident reconstruction and physics and delta v's and medical causation and all of these things but no sometimes that actually occurs sometimes it doesn't but those times where it doesn't that's a lot of the circumstances where we get these letters saying hey you may think this is clear liability we don't too bad so sad so let's talk about how we prove liability jared so a lot of the things you just touched on is kind of first step is one thing you left out is sometimes they don't really even do an investigation. Mm -hmm. They just call and say, well, because I said so or I decided we're not at fault. So we primarily will rely on documents, data, evidence from the scene, witnesses, you know, what the drivers say, the physics of the accident, pictures that we might, you know, have of the cars after the crash occurs. We can send people out to examine the roadway, look for gouge marks or things, you know, skid marks, things like that in physical evidence at the scene that might help to tell a better story of what happened, who was at fault, who wasn't at fault, and really how the wreck occurred. So a lot of times, you know, we will put people on the ground. Insurance companies will, their adjusters will make a couple phone calls, maybe look at a picture if you're lucky, and that's their decision. We, on the other hand, will go to the scene, send experts to the scene, try to locate vehicles to look for data that might be on the black boxes, cameras. There's a wealth of information out there to begin to reconstruct a crash, and when it gets past mine and Joel's pay grade, we'll hire an expert. Instead of just being like, nah, we think it's this, we will actually go out, hire an engineer, someone who has a lifetime of training in a specific area to help figure out whether it's causation, liability, whatever it may be. We will rely on experts to get the truth of what happens. And sometimes it's good news, sometimes it's not. Yeah. <laughs> but we will get the answers. The long and short of it is that we don't just rely on what somebody tells us because believe it or not, people misremember at the best or lie at the worst um, about what happened. And a lot of times when we see these letters come to us that say, we've determined that this is not our fault. Well, sometimes the adjuster has only gone so far as to make a phone call to their insured and their insured who calls the wreck, if it's a car wreck, says, no, 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 Jared ran the red light, not me. Well, guess who's got the most motivation in the world to lie about something? The person that's about to get sued. But we also understand that the person bringing the claim may try to embellish facts. And so we want to believe it's a trust but verify for us. Like we're going to trust what our clients are telling us, but we're going to verify it by the data and make sure that if we're going to bring this claim, that we've got the evidence to back it up. And the reason why we do that is because it's not us. It's not insurance companies to get to determine liability. It is a jury or a judge if you can't agree, if all the parties can't agree, if there's a dispute, somebody's got to be the decision maker. And it's not us, it's not defense lawyer, it's a jury or a judge. So if we're going to go try a case in front of a jury or a judge, we're going to need the facts and data because the jury or the judge is going to look at our client through glasses of skepticism and say, well, okay, we hear what you're saying, but you're kind of, you've got an interest in this case. Like you have a motivation to not be fully truthful with us. So we want to support our client's claim with evidence. 
with what other witnesses say, with the data that Jared just talked about. Um, and, and then the defense, they don't have to prove squat in the case. They just have to say, well, you didn't prove this one element or whatever. But good defense lawyers are going to hear what their client says. Good insurance adjusters are going to hear what their insured says. And they're going to look past that to see, is there data to support that? The bad ones are just going to say, oh, well, my client says so. So yeah, there you go. We deny liability and all of that. So where's something, another place that we look and we run into a lot is with what we call causation or medical causation. In other words, did this event cause these injuries? So you get past supporting fault with evidence and witnesses and things, but then you have to move on to what we call causation to prove the claim. You want to talk about that? Yeah, again, it's kind of a lot of the same stuff. It's looking at medical records and the testimony of the client as to how they were feeling before the wreck and how they're feeling after the wreck. And then again, trust and verify. We take those opinions and we'll go to get medical records and look back to see, you know, what providers have they went to? If they have neck pain as a result of the wreck, did they have neck pain before the wreck? Um, that doesn't necessarily mean there wouldn't be a case, but again, we're trying to bring all the facts to a jury if that's where we end up and we want to tell the whole story. We don't want to tell part of it. We want to get every piece of information that we can. We'll also rely on, um, again, back to the experts, biomechanical engineers, people who understand forces and the way that forces interact with the human body and whether it can cause an injury or not cause an injury. So again, it's, relying on experts, gathering the data, talking to our clients, talking to other uh, family members or witnesses of the clients that can say, you know, Joel used to be super healthy. He was working out at the gym every day. And now after this crash, I never see him anymore. He can't even lift the you know gallon of milk out of the car. So all of that data, again, can come together so that we can prove our case to a jury and make sure that we help them get the truth of the matter and understand the injury, the wreck, and how the two interplay with each other and causing it. Yeah, and I think medical testimony and medical evidence to support the claim is especially important in cases involving injuries that you can't see with your own two eyes. So like brain injuries and personal injury cases, um, spinal disc injuries, anything where you know it's not a bone poking out of the skin or bruising or swelling or something like that on the body, but it's hidden where if I just saw you standing on the sidewalk, I would have no idea you're injured, but maybe after I have a 20 minute conversation with you, I start catching things that tell me, oh, something's, something's wrong with this person, something's not right, but that's not enough. You gotta have the medical testimony to support it. So um, long story short, in personal injury claims, there are distinct stages. The first one is prior to filing a lawsuit where we're gathering all this information and we submit it to the insurance company and hope that they will actually consider all of the evidence in making their liability determination as to whether they're going to make an offer or not. Uh, sometimes they don't consider it, sometimes they do. If they if they do consider it, we'll engage in settlement negotiations and talk about the risk for both sides and what the value of the injury is and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but then if you can't enter into an agreement, then you go into the lawsuit stage, those settlement, you're just formalizing discovery and getting more evidence and all of that kind of stuff, cross-examining witnesses, trying to test the validity of what they have to say. Um, but then you can continue as the decision makers are the attorneys or the insurance company, the plaintiff's lawyers or the plaintiff in the case in those negotiations. But at some point, if you can't agree, it's got to be the judge or the jury. And then even after the judge or the jury, then you may go up to a court of appeals where you have a panel of judges trying to determine whether something, a mistake was made or whether somebody's right or wrong. So there are multiple layers of the case and at different stages, there are different people who are making decisions about who's liable and who's not. It doesn't end when an insurance company says, we've done our investigation that they may or may not have done, and we find that our insured's not at fault. So if you get one of those letters, it's probably worth at least going to an attorney, letting them do an investigation, and the answer you get back might be, yeah, there's no case here but at least you know. You're not just taking the insurance company's word for it. Um, but the answer may be, 
oh yeah, like there's this witness, this witness, there's this roadway evidence, there's this physical evidence, there's these documents, there's this video that proves that you're right, that you actually have a case and we see a path to recovery. So um, I think the lesson here is engage a lawyer, engage one that's going to put the time and the effort into proving your case on your behalf so that you don't just have to take the insurance company's word for it that their insured is not liable for your injuries. And consider engaging one sooner rather than later. I know I talk to a lot of clients who think they will just kind of wait and see what happens with the insurance company, see if they do the right thing and accept liability. And that's great in theory, but the problem is a lot of this evidence we're talking about can go quickly. The car, once they start to do the right thing, the car might get sold. If it's totaled, it goes to a tow yard, it disappears. There could be vital evidence in that vehicle that you just can't get, or the roadway could get cleaned up, repaved, clean. The rain could come and wash away something. You know, there's a lot of things that are very helpful, but only if we're able to get them. And generally, the quicker you can secure that evidence, the better. So while it's tempting to wait to see if the insurance company does the right thing, it's also pretty important to engage an attorney early so that we can collect and keep all of that evidence. Yeah, you want to you want to protect yourself right out of the gate, and it's not just car wrecks; it can be slip and falls. You know, those those closed circuit cameras and surveillance videos or security cameras, whatever. A lot of times they loop over after sometimes as short as three, seven, ten days. Very rarely do we see those those videos saved for more than a month. And if you've fallen in a store, that's going to be the most critical piece of evidence you can find is the video that shows exactly what happened. Even in the car wreck cases, sometimes there's traffic cameras. Not always, but sometimes, especially on major roadways around Atlanta, there are ways to get video of the wreck itself to determine exactly what happened. But at some point, those videos are no longer going to exist, and unless you know how to secure them and get them, uh, you might be at the mercy of some insurance company telling you, well, it wasn't our fault, too bad, so sad. So uh, anything else on that? No, I think we've covered it. All right, so we hope that this video has been helpful to you. If so, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, we will see you next week. As personal injury lawyers, we love what we do, and we're happy to share the experience that we've gained in personal injury law. To help our family, friends, and YouTube subscribers, we've shared over 300 personal injury videos covering various injury topics. So if you'd like to gain more knowledge that may help protect yourself or a loved one when they're on the roads or out in public, check out our channel or view our playlist of shorts for quick personal injury tips. Mm -hmm.